parents and guardians, family and friends of our top graduates for the 2017 FBE exit exams, our special invited guests here this morning, you, the graduates of 2017 FBE exit exams. Welcome to this special event just for you. Welcome to the award ceremony of the top students of the 2017 FBE exit exams. We would like to first start by congratulating you on a job well done. Congratulations for being top students in your respective classes. Congratulations for being role models to other students, not only in your schools, but in all schools that we have on our island on the Dutch side. And we also congratulate the parents, the family, the friends, teachers, and support staff of the respective schools for assisting and ensuring that the children here this morning are top of their schools or top in the overall as well of all FB exam um, subjects. Success. The road to success is not straight. There's a curve called failure, a loop called confusion, speed bumps called friends, red light called enemies, and caution lights called family. But if you have a spare called determination, an engine called perseverance, insurance called faith, and a driver called Jesus, you will make it to the place called success. Thank you. I want to congratulate you on behalf of the ministry, my other colleagues as well. I know minister will do that on behalf of the entire government. But I really want to congratulate you for a job well done and that we have been given the opportunity to honor you this morning. And we're very grateful for that. So we can show our appreciation because you are our shining stars. And I, as I listened to the poem just now, I, I was thinking, you know, that on your, in your journey, I'm sure that it wasn't easy, right? Was it easy? No, but it was worth it because you, you've, you've outshined many others and you're here today and so we are honoring you. And I want to just leave a very short story with you about a person who during his journey at some point was met with a lot of setbacks but what I want you to know that at the end, if you continue to persevere, you will make it. This is just a starting point uh, in your life. As a matter of fact, one of the very first starting points, there are lots more to achieve. And there will be obstacles, as was said earlier. Many times you will meet obstacles. But if you continue to focus on the end goal, and that is achieving the mission that is important. I want to use just a brief illustration of someone from the Bible who I taught. And some of you know the Bible, right? All of you know the Bible? You heard about Joseph before? Of course you did. Because Joseph was one of the key figures in the Bible who there was something that was decreed over his life that he would he would be there to save a nation. And some of us will be called to save a nation in different forms and fashion. But on his journey, he met a lot of obstacles. But the key thing is he stayed focused. And that's what I want you to do today. Stay focused. As you continue your journey in life, there will be obstacles, but you need to stay focused. So Joseph stayed focused. He was thrown where, 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 where he went? into a what? In a pit, right? They dropped him in a pit and figured that was the, the end of him. But it wasn't, he persevered. And he kept his eyes on what ultimately was said over his life, that he would make a difference. And so what I'm saying to you this morning is that even though the obstacles come and try to stop you or deter you or to delay you, because situations come to delay, just to delay, still stay focused. Stay focused that this day, it's the 3rd of July, right? Mm -hmm. We were honoring shining stars for St. Martin, 
who will continue not only this day, but in the future to be shining stars. And so when the obstacles may come, you just hold on to the fact that the Honorable Minister of Education and the St. Martin government saw you as a shining star for this nation. And you will continue to be a shining star for this nation, no matter what the situation will be. And so I want to once more congratulate you, congratulate your family members, and to say especially to your parents and to your teachers, job well done. Be at their side, support them, because they need that support from us. That's why we're adults. And so once more, God bless you, and we look forward to seeing you taking up your rightful position within society in leadership in the near future. Thank you and God. It's been quite a long morning for me already. I don't know how I could confuse it with morning still. In trying also to get everything ready for you. In visiting all the various school leaving exercises and graduation and commencement ceremonies in the past couple weeks, I have been inspired. Now you might think all the adults that come there to say something to you are trying to inspire you but you have no clue how many of us, even those of us that are in leadership functions, are inspired by your hard work, your determination, your drive, your discipline. And your teachers' hard work, determination, drive, discipline, through all kinds of obstacles. And I must say, as soon as the FBE results were in. Some school managers were on my tail. And the guilty gonna start to laugh. But every year government does something. And because of how things were running, there was some misunderstanding, but we had always intended to do something. But it wasn't ready in time. We also wanted to award all of the valedictorians at their graduations, but it was not ready in time. And so that's why not only are we honoring today our top nationwide graduates, we are also honoring the valedictorians of each of the elementary schools. So why some of the valedictorians did not make the national list they are the tops in their environment. And we believe that each child must be encouraged. Each child must feel the specialness of what they have done and get the recognition that they deserve. In those graduations, I made sure and I said to the schools, you shouldn't only recognize the top academic students. You should also recognize your top athletes, recognize your top artists, recognize your top um, writers, the ones who write the best, the ones who have improved the most, so that they re remain encouraged because the country doesn't only need the doctors and the lawyers and the other Indians and chiefs. We need the workers too. And we need them also to feel valuable. And we need them to also feel um, like they are contributing as much as anybody else. In one of the graduations, we said, no one is an island. Even the biggest countries in the world are looking to collaborate with other countries. So who is little St. Martin? And who is little Kaisha Rice? Or Christopher Nair? Or Nisette Gomez? Each of you, each of us, needs to remember that we have to work in teams, even to reach to the top. And today might be for you, and tomorrow for me. But in sharing that push, we're pulling together a bigger group. So I would like to <clears throat> continue to encourage you. I know some parents also throughout the year, especially in the English speaking schools, were on my case about how difficult the Dutch exam was because their children had seen some exams from the years before and they were in a panic. And I still see them on the top lists. And they told me we're paying for extra classes and the child goes to school and then we pick them up and they eat in the car and then they go to our afternoon school and I said, stop stressing out the child. <laughs> and I know some of you are guilty of that in here. And I'm going to tell you, stop stressing out the child again. Because the children will go where they have to go. 
If they don't achieve it on the first try, one good thing about our system, which we complain about, is you can continue to climb. You can continue to climb. When I graduated and I went through what was the Marvo and then the Harvo, when I was in my Marvo graduation at 15, I heard my keynote speaker talk about her journey. And those of you who are old enough will remember the ATAO and the um, Sundial School. Well, this student started at the Sundial School, then she went to the ATAO, then she went to the Marvo, then she went to the Harvo, then she left St. Martin and went to the Veweo. Then she went to university to become a lawyer. And she became a tax lawyer at the end. And she ended up running the tax department on St. Martin. Had she been discouraged because she wasn't her top graduate in sixth grade, she would have never been what she was. Now you all already have a jump. You are top graduates. You're all not, as a valedictorians, going to the highest level of education. But if that is your goal, don't let anybody tell you that that is not where you should be. So one thing I want you to leave from all of your speeches you've heard before, and this one today, is that you should never let anybody determine the weather in your life. Do not let anybody determine the path in your life. Do not let anybody throw you off the path that you have in your mind, especially if it is what you believe. Did you hear me? Yes. Teachers and parents, congratulations to you too. School mm -hmm. managers, congratulations to you too. But I want to remind you that you have to help these children recognize their dream. If you did not do what you had to do when you were a child, when you were a teenager, or when you were a young adult, that's not their problem. You have been charged with the responsibility to help them find their way. If you have a dream to be something other than what you are today, go pursue it. That would be the best example you could give them. Who here has a dream to do other than what you're doing right now? <laughs> but then be honest, put your hand up so your children can see. Good. I have a dream to one day tour the world and give motivational speeches. I have a dream to own a school that would meet everybody's need. I have so many dreams. And maybe what I'm doing now will help me achieve my dream. And maybe what you're doing now will help you achieve your dream. But I have to study some more. I have to learn some more. I have to continue doing research because I don't plan to do this for the rest of my life. And I want you and all of you in here to understand that your dream doesn't end with an age. Okay? As Mrs. Powell said, you might be delayed. You had some children, you were working with them, getting them to where they're going. And you know what? While they study, and you study too. We have what we have become now, a learning city on St. Martin. As government, we're offering online courses. Listen and look out for those type of things. Sign up. The University of St. Martin is right there. Take some courses. Get to the next level. And that will be the best example you can set for these young people. They can be the ones that will change your life. But while they are changing your life, you can help change yours as well. All of us can be better. And many come to St. Martin to be better than wherever they were. As much as they have what to say about this little place, somehow the honey sweet here. <laughs> because as we look even at our student population, we see that immigration had played a great role. But when I say, what I say to our indigenous St. Martin people is, you need to want it as much as every immigrant wants it. It's just like in America. America is an immigrant land too. It's a place that has thrived on immigration, despite what Mr. Trump might want to say. Right? And if 
anybody can leave the Caribbean or Eastern parts of the world, Asian parts of the world, and thrive in America. Why can't the Americans? So for all of us here today, I say education is the key to changing your world. And with the World Wide Web, it has become more accessible to more people. So make use of it. The division of exams isn't here today, the division, because its head is out on leave and others, for other reasons, are also out. But usually they give a whole synopsis of what has happened and how the scores were, etc. Overall, we've improved only slightly. I'm not happy with that. But I must say, when I looked at the results, I was like holding my head, how are we going to award all these students? Because if we had done it how we did it in the beginning, top 10, they wouldn't have room in here for parents. Um, the overall students, top 10 or more than, okay, let me just go by subject because I don't have the full list of the overall. We only looked at the top five because there were so many. But for English overall, we had, if we just looked at the top five scores, we had 15 students, just for English. For general knowledge, we had 19. For mathematics, which we hear so much about, we had 25, of which one, two, three, four, five of them had 99%. The next four had 98%. The next five had 97%. And the next, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six had 96%. And then the ones that came in five were 94%. For Dutch, we had 14. So that was the smallest group, but still not so small because English was 15. But to me, the math grades were the most impressive. So all who say math was hard, they lied. <laughs> It was doable. It tested what was in the curriculum. And I must say too, when we look at schools, some schools who were lagging behind really pushed forward with a vengeance. And I want that to continue. I want it to be that the next time we are here, the next times, because you know you have to make long-term goals, we're gonna be like, okay, we can't have special awards anymore because everybody's that great. How about it? But as long as we have the opportunity, we will continue to highlight our top students. So congratulations. You are the bright shining stars of the country, St. Martin. You are the bright shining stars of all your schools. And so collectively, all 24 of you, I know a few are missing. I hope you will continue to shine so bright that your light inspires all the other students in the classes you will be joining. Keep your heads up. In life, you will always find someone who's a little better than you in something. In something. Make sure that as you strive to be your best in your academics, you're also striving to be the best in character. Because you will be better known for who you are than for what you have done. Who you are, how you have treated people, how you have helped others along the way, how you have, whether you have been boastful about your greatness or humble about it. And at your graduations, and a few people I met before, I learned of children who were not the top in their school this exam. Yeah. So they work extra hard to be top at the last leg of the journey. Others who started out not speaking a word of English, more or less Dutch, but are here today as a top in their schools. And that's why I'm happy that the top top get to sit with some of the other tops. You understand? 
so that you can be inspired also. I asked Christopher to be a part of the ceremony for a special reason, because he is that student who came from the Dominican Republic at the age of nine, and is today the valedictorian of the Sister Marie Laurent School. Through the hard work of himself, his hard working attitude, but of course the great push from his grandma. Can you stand? Can you stand? And of course, a supportive school system. Because we hear all the reasons why our children are failing. They don't speak English. They don't have anyone at home to help them. They don't, they don't have this, they don't have that. I went to school with a couple of Haitian children that make me feel shame because nobody home could have helped them, but they're the ones that had the tens. Because whether mom or dad could speak the language, they made sure they did their work. And this special grandma not only made sure they did, did, that Christopher did his work, she took him to the library diligently. Reading is fundamental. And that's something we want to continue to promote throughout the ministry. So thank you, parents. Thank you, guardians. Thank you, schools, for all you do. We're not only looking at the end result, though. We really want to see that nice, broad change. I would now like to call the overall five top students nationwide, meaning that um, out of all of the graduates, these students scored the highest, the top five highest grades. And I would like to call on the representative for Akash Batia, and uh, sorry, Mrs. Powell Richardson is joining minister to hand out the prizes and certificates. The representative for Batia Akash, who is absent, and he is the overall nationwide top student. His, his average is 90% and he is, a, he is a student of the St. Joseph Primary School. <laughs> the, overall, the overall top student will receive a laptop. I would now like to call on student Saheli Kirpalani, also nationwide overall, second, second highest, and this is, her, her average is 88% of the St. Joseph Primary School as well. Also receiving a laptop. <laughs> Our third highest overall nationwide graduate for 2017 is Ms. Nizette Gomez of the Sister Machda Primary School with an 88% average. Please come forward, Nizette. Yes, Nizette, you are Nizette, right? <laughs> So I see you surprised yourself. That's a great thing. <laughs> we have our fourth top student, Dia Ahnani of the St. Dominic Primary School with an 86, with an 86 percent average. <laughs> Turn it on. Also receiving a laptop. And our fifth overall top nationwide student is Jaylene Javier Fana of Helmut Snyder's Primary School. With an 86% average.
We now move on to overall nationwide highest score in the subject of English. And that was Akash Batia of the St. Joseph Primary School with a 97% average. And he will receive a gift certificate of Office World with a value of 300 guilders. We now go to general knowledge. We now go to general knowledge, and we will start from the third highest and go to the no, overall to highest. Oh, oh, okay, Violet sorry, my apologies. All, of, all three of these um, students acquired an 83% overall average of general knowledge, so all three are top in the general knowledge. And we will call on Christopher Ruan Moriso of the Seventh-day Adventist Primary School. And Mr. Christopher Ruan Moriso will receive a tablet, will receive a tablet for his accomplishment. We now would like to call Shirak Ramchandani of the Braulia Miller Primary School, also with an 83% overall average, also receiving a tablet as his prize of accomplishment. We will now like to call on Zanzi Brook of the Asha Stevens Primary School. 83% overall average as well. Mm -hmm. 